I just like I went to Norway for six months and then I also got to visit the Faroe Islands and Iceland while I was there. So um, I wanted to just talk about the amazing nature there and the different ways people like adapt to deal with that. Yeah, so um, basically the first weekend that I was in Norway, I went on a skiing trip to this remote part of inland Norway. And um, the train station had actually like burned down at such a remote station, so the train missed the station in the dark, and we had to actually go backwards on the train to get there. And then we got out, and it was a total whiteout. Like we couldn't see anything, and we had to navigate to the um, cabin by compass. It was negative 20 degrees outside, and I was horrified I'd get lost and die. Um, and once we were in the cabin, we were 19 people in six beds, and there was like a wood stove. We had to um, melt snow and break into frozen rivers to get drinking water. It was a really intense experience. <laughs> um, this is the outhouse. You had to dig down like eight feet into the snow to get to it. Um, I was also really scared the first time I had to pee by myself. <laughs> and I was sure I was going to get lost between the cabin and the outhouse, but I did it and I survived. And I even learned how to ski and um, it's just an amazing place. And I really learned how much uh, humans need and don't need to survive. Like, uh, on one hand, um, all we really needed was like a safe place to stay warm and some food. On the other hand, we had brought all that in by train and we were only staying for a few days. So I don't know how anyone could survive like in these mountains before <laughs> that happened. As you can see, the visibility was just terrible. Um, but like on the last day, the sun came out a little bit and you could actually see that we were in the mountains and not just in a giant white area. Uh, and it was just really beautiful um, and it really sort of changed how I feel about nature. <laughs> the brutality of it and the beauty of it both. So. <laughs> and the fjords, like that's probably the most famous part of Norway. A lot of tourists go there just for like an afternoon on a sunny summer day. Uh, I spent the night there and I realized like although it's incredibly beautiful, it's not peaceful. Um, basically like because of the really steep sides, it's dark most of the day because the sun's only like here for a couple hours. Um, so this town, Gudvangen, um, it's right on the fjord, it's beautiful, but only about 30 people live there because it's dark and there's constant avalanches. Like, I'm not kidding, there's, you'll hear like just a rumbling about every half hour and snow will just cascade down the mountain like a waterfall that's there for half an hour. It's like just intense. Um, this is actually my city, Bergen. You might think I've mixed up the photos. I haven't. This is pretty much within the city limits of Bergen. Um, it's surrounded by nine mountains, and you can just walk up them from your door. So it's an amazing place to live if you're active. I give anything to live there as an adult, but we'll see. Um, and Bergen's also like the rainiest city in Europe, so in the world almost. So um, basically, the people in Oslo, which is the capital of Norway, they always say that the Bergeners, like, they don't know how to dress. They just wear rubber boots. They wear rain jackets. <laughs> like, what are they doing? But the Bergeners say that the Oslo people don't remember what it's like to be Norwegian. They think they're like fancy <laughs> Europeans wearing nice clothes. So, um, and this is Tromsø, which is actually like one of the northernmost cities in the world. It's also in Norway. Um, it's very far north. And even though it's like as far north as Barrow, Alaska, it feels like a very civilized and normal place to live. Like you feel fine walking down the street. They've got a nice university. They have a botanical garden. They actually have the first movie theater in Norway. This is from the Faroe Islands, which are this like remote archipelago I had the pleasure of visiting while I was over there. Um, only 50,000 people live there, and they're really isolated. So they have their own language, their own culture, their own airline, everything their own, which is amazing. And it's just incredible landscapes, like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, it was really hard for them to live there back in the day because, as you can see, there's almost no flat land, and you would just build like a house out of driftwood and stones and like grass, and um, winter storms would come and just blow the villages like into the sea. So it was really hard to like scrape out a living, and until the last probably 50 years, they were the poorest place in Europe. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me about the weather, this actually is a windmill, part of a windmill. <laughs> they decided, oh, we have a lot of wind, let's get wind power. So they bought three windmills from Norway. First winter storm, two of them fell down. Uh, so <laughs> this is what's left of their wind experiment. Too much wind, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is Gwasadalur, which is the most uh, isolated village in Europe. Um, like, as you can see, they have like no harbor. Um, they Basically, you can only get in and out by helicopter if you were like dying or by climbing one of these mountains. The post uh, man like climbed over the mountains three times a week to give them their mail. And just in like 2003, they built a tunnel. Um, in the Faroe Islands, pretty much their only resources have been like the sea, 
like getting fish and whale from the sea. And sheep, they do a lot of things with the wool. Faroese wool is really soft and famous, and now you can buy Faroese wool sweaters in Copenhagen, London, uh, New York. This is actually one of them. It's a pretty like famous design, that's me. <laughs> so Faroese people, like they have a really interesting blend of old and new. Like they might eat lasagna one night and then like whale and blubber the next night. And they'll wear like Faroese sweaters, like just like they've been making for thousands of years over blue jeans. And they're just incredibly friendly. Like I've never been treated with like so um, by such welcoming people in my life. Um, this is Iceland. I think in Iceland it's even more extreme, like the combination of humans and nature. Um, this was the ring road, which is pretty much their only highway. It was incredibly difficult for them to build. Like this area, the Skydra Sandur, it was like impossible to cross until they built the ring road because it just like shifted in glacial sands. Um, this is a glacier in Mjöldals, uh, Yoko, and it was covered by the volcanic ash in the Eiffel Yokel eruption in 2010, which was delaying all the air travel in Europe. Um, so you see they have to deal with like fire and ice in Iceland. And the Icelandic eruptions can affect the whole world. Like in 1800, there was a year without a summer. Thousands of people died because of an Icelandic eruption. Um, this is me eating rotten shark. Um, in these countries, they eat a lot of unusual food. They'll eat whole sheep's head, they'll eat blubber, they'll eat dried fish. I've had it all, I can eat it all, except for rotten shark. This stuff is terrible. It tastes like urine soaked beef jerky. I'm not kidding. It's disgusting. Um, <laughs> but there's also like benefits to like the crazy nature. Like this is me relaxing in a hot spring because of the geothermal activity. They have like heated pools in every tiny Icelandic village. This village has like seven people in it. Like basically the people who own this horses and that's it. But they just put like a horse trough down there and you can relax and soak. So <laughs> that's it. <Ooh. laughs>